So ever since the first time I heard an improvised solo, I was kind of shocked for a few days. I thought improvising and coming up with the music on the spot and somehow making it work would require you to just play a bazillion hours a day and just know eventually somehow how to sound good in each and every situation. So of course it's not the case. It's just a matter of knowing and understanding the basic concepts of improvisation. So in this guide, we'll teach you exactly how to do that and eventually get a lot more comfortable with that. So, how to music, like a year and a half later. Here we go! <laughs> Oh my god, it's been so long. I'm very happy to have some time and make some videos. Finally, I'm gonna talk about how to improvise today. Oh my god, cut to the chase already. And what the hell is the deal with the old intro? Dude, you don't even look the same. Uh, what? Also, didn't you say you wanna make some new things? Didn't you say you wanna use that green screen you got? Yeah, I did, but I haven't got, I still, I don't know. What the hell is this even? What are you doing? Is this a vlog? No. Are you doing a gear review vlog? Yeah, it's freaking a, video lessons? It's, what is it? Like, just make up your mind. Already. And what the hell is happening with this, man? What the hell? Really? COVID hair? Dude, it's been like a year and a half. Just get a freaking haircut. Just get a freaking haircut. Dude, what the f <laughs> Get it off! What the hell? <laughs> oh my god, get your sh together. Dude, just let me do my thing. Come on. Okay. So we have a lot of cool stuff happening today. I'm going to talk about how to improvise. I'm going to do a little review and unboxing for my Gaia 4 by Theo Wani, as well as comparing that to my Retro Revival Breaker Beats. So here we go. Let's talk about the blue scale. It looks just like that. <laughs> Here's how you start. As you can see, it's not difficult, it's just a matter of getting used to that scale, maybe experimenting with that a little bit, go up and down the scale, cover the entire range of the instrument and get comfortable with all of it. And then it's just a matter of creating some small melodies. You gotta just start from this and then you can take it to other places and make it really interesting. You can make it your own, you can even play very complex and cool stuff with it. Now let's go and check out the Theo Wani piece. What a nice box. Okay, let's open it up real quick, just like that. Let's get it out, see what's inside. So we got some stickers. Legendary! So usually I get one. This time I got two stickers. I don't know why, maybe I'm special. Cool, let's get to it. We got this thingy, pamphlet, info, I don't know. And the screwdriver. As usual, we have a pouch. Feels nice, feels like really good quality. And there it is. Wow, it looks good, huh? A 
That's a lot more shiny than what I'm used to. So I wanted a silver plating, but they told me they don't do that. And they offered to do white bronze. So I just took it and I'm very happy actually. It looks great, it feels great. And this white bronze seems to be a lot more shiny for some reason. Less matte. Ligature is also white bronze, but the plate is still gold plated. So this mouthpiece has a lot less stripes on the baffle. The window is more square for some reason and it slides right into the chamber. Seems like the table is very flat, seems like the arch shape of the, the tip of the mouthpiece is a lot similar to the shape of a reed now in comparison to the older mouthpiece. The tip along with the table being flat should give a better result. I already expected to play a lot better than the older mouthpiece. So that's like a medium baffle. And it starts going down around here. With every Theo 1A I get, I actually take the ligature out and bump it up one spot. So the plate is like exactly in the middle of the reed where I like it to be. And it feels better to me. If you have a Theo 1A piece, consider trying it. Let's take it out and try and do that. I would definitely recommend putting the reed guard on. This prevents the table from being scratched by the plate of the ligature. I just love that plating, it looks so good. I don't know what's the difference between white, bronze and silver. I assume it doesn't tarnish as quickly or at all, like silver. And it also looks a bit less shiny than silver, like a bit less bright. But, you know, if it stays in the same condition for a long time, I really don't care. All right, let's see how it sounds. I'm gonna do a little comparison between that one and my Retro Revival Breaker piece. So in conclusion, I like both pieces very much. I think the guy is very comfortable to play. I used to have the guy 3, I played it for about a year. I recently got the guy 4. I play it a lot. I take it to a lot of different gigs. I got to record stuff with that piece. As for the guy 3, I actually recorded this. 
with it. And in general, it just feels very versatile. You can do a lot of different things with it. I felt comfortable playing subtones. And when needed, it feels like it has some edge. It feels like it has some volume and projection. It's definitely not as bright. And the volume I can get with it is not as high as I can do with a Gardala piece. But just like as a mouthpiece that's gonna be like in the middle, exactly in the middle between really bright and really dark. It has all, it has everything from both worlds. It's very good, it's a good mouthpiece. I'm very glad to have it around and I'll definitely play with it a lot. All right, now let's talk about the other piece. My Retro Revival piece, 7th Avenue South um, 107 tip. This one is surprisingly good. I got to play a lot of Gardala style pieces over the years. One thing that I did with all of them is have them refaced by Keith Bradbury, which is awesome. It's a really great refacer. So the piece to begin with is nice and easy and comfortable to play. I felt like very open tipped Gardala pieces are kind of hard to blow. They kind of feel like they make me tired really fast. This one doesn't do that. Maybe it's the fact that it's a 107 tip. Maybe it's something else about the facing. Maybe the facing curve is not as long. I don't know, but I really like it. It did felt like it squeaks a little bit here and there, but luckily I just got it refaced and it kind of solved all the problems. So I highly recommend refacing your mouthpiece. If you feel like your mouthpiece is like very good on one hand, on the other hand, something is kind of missing or it kind of squeaks here and there. It can also help if you feel like your mouthpiece doesn't get all of the reads right away and make them play, but rather is like like really picky with reads. These were very nice mouthpieces. So hopefully I'll have more time to do more game reviews and mouthpiece reviews. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. It's gonna be very helpful for my channel. Everything I've done today, including a transcription of me improvising on the blue scale is right down below in the description. Check it out, you can find it there in concert key and tenor key and alto key and all of them. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next episode.